the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Hello, my dear students at home. It's good to meet you, as usual. I am about to show my name, your commerce teacher. Today we are going to look at a different topic, a new topic, an interesting topic. And the topic is known as money. We will look at, uh, under this topic, the following areas. One, meaning of money. Two, trade by butter. Three, problems associated with trade by butter. Four, evolution of money. Five, fractures of money. Six, advantages of using money. Seven, qualities of money. Eight, forms of money. Lastly, similarities and differences between using money and other commodities as uh, Million of exchange. Quickly, the first one, which is money, we will look at, like I said, meaning of money. What is money? Nobody can say money is money. But by the time you say that, you are not saying anything. Money is defined as anything that is generally acceptable as a medium of exchange. As a medium of exchange and in the settlement of debts. Again, Money is anything that is generally acceptable as a medium of exchange and as in terms of settlement of debts. In the settlement of debts. It can also be defined as anything that is generally acceptable as a means of payment. Generally acceptable as a means of making payment. That's what we mean by money. Have we talk about what money is? We will now look at what you call trade by butter. Why are we talking about trade by butter? We're talking about trade by butter because you cannot talk about money without talking about trade by butter. You cannot talk about origin of money without talking about trade by butter. Now, what is trade by butter? Trade by butter is a form of trading in which goods are exchanged directly for other goods without the use of money as a means of exchange, as a medium of exchange. Trade by butter, we said, is the form of trading in which goods are exchanged directly for other goods without the use of money as a medium of exchange. In simple language, it is the exchange of goods for goods where the use of money is not involved at all. And this is practiced in those days. It is a kind of trading practice in those days. This, before the coming of what we have today as money. Now, this practice of exchanging goods for goods, in those days, during the days of our great-great-grandfathers, was associated with different problems, which were solved as a result of coming of money. Now, let's look at those problems that they faced in those days, when they were using this means of exchange. The problems include one, what you call problem of double coincidence of ones. Double coincidence of ones. This is a problem because it mean, what it means is, if you have rice and you are looking for beans, you must look for somebody who is looking for rice that you have. That is ready to exchange his beans for the rice. So looking for somebody and getting the person that is requiring what you actually have is the problem. So this, is, this was a very big problem. You will see somebody moving from one place to another with goods that he has, looking for somebody that will have what he wants from one place to another. And at the end of the day, he will move in vain without getting it. Because you may, get, you, he may, you may get somebody with beans that you want. But the person with the beans may not like what you have, which is rice. Now, the other problem is no fixed rate of exchange. No fixed rate of exchange. If I have rice and I want, I want your beans, what will, what, will be the what will determine the exchange rate? 
how do how will I know that I, I am I am not cheating you and you also are not cheating me? There because there was no fixed rate of exchange and it, 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 be, it became a very big problem at that time. Number three, wasted of time and effort. You have to be looking from one, like I said, you have to be moving from one place to another, looking for who has what you want. You may have somebody that has what, like I said, that have what you want, but he may not want what you have. The effort is, is going to be wasted. Time also is going to be wasted. If you are hungry, you may even <laughs> collapse. Number four, problems of indivisibility. Indivisibility. You may be looking for beef, having yam. Will the person having a cow slaughter his cow and cut a bit for you because, you are, because he is looking for what you have? Goods we are not divided into small units for, easily, for, for easy exchange. Number five, problem associated with bulkiness of some goods. You, want, you have goods that are in large quantities. And what you have, or what you need, rather, is in small quantity. It's a, it's a problem. Or you may have, you, you may have, you want, you may have what somebody needs, but of course, the carrying the goods are, are heavy. To move them from one place to another becomes very big problem. Unlike when it is money, you can carry a lot of money in your pocket easily without even having any problem. Then we have number six. It, it, it discourages uh, borrowing and lending. There was nothing like borrowing and lending. Somebody can borrow you beans, hoping that you, you by the time you harvest your rice, you give him. But how sure is he that the rice will be harvested? So in the issue of borrowing and lending becomes very problem, become a very serious problem. And then, then we have another one. It discourages large scale production because if you are not able, if you don't have where to store your goods, you can only produce what you, you, you will be used within a very short period of time. And so that you produce large quantities and be storing them because if you produce large quantities, if you don't take time at the end of the day, they may be wasteful. They may be waste. And the last one we have here is uh, difficulty in storing wealth. No, no means of storing wealth. You may produce large products, produce, but if you don't have where to store them, it becomes a problem. So these are the problems that we are associated with. Uh, trade by barter that necessitated the issue of money as a means of making payments. Now let's look at the origin of money. How did money come into being? Where did money originate from? We look at one. Uh, money originated because of the problems, various difficulties that arose from trade by butter. Different commodities were used by various countries in order this. Now, when they discovered that the, the issue of trade by butter was very difficult, they now started to be thinking of using commodities in exchange of goods. Commodities started to be used in exchange of goods. You give a commodity to, to have what you are looking for. Now, these commodities that were used in those days include ketchup, curry, shawls, tobacco, salt, etc. If you have these communities, you can easily exchange them to get what you want to have. So the issue of money started as a result of exchange of commodities for other commodities. But these commodities were known. We are like known and they become a kind of general acceptable commodities. After that, the next step in the history of money. It's to do with metals. Metals were now 
People started to use to make use of metals in making small units of money. Now, these metals were used from silver and gold. They were used from silver and gold. And at a later time, the issue of goldsmith came into being. And this happened in England, Great Britain, where we have a goldsmith that was keeping gold and silver for different people. For keeping sake. They were taking their gold, their silver, for keeping sake. And in the process of keeping the gold for them, he would write a small piece of paper. He would write in a small piece of paper their name, what they brought, the time they brought, and the day they brought, and then give them as a receipt. That when the time they come to collect, to collect they present the receipt. So now the receipt started to be used as money. Somebody can now buy something and say, I have a goal with somebody, with my goldsmith. What so, so, so amount of money? Let me buy these things from you so that I will give you this. So that when you, when, when you, want, to get, when you want to collect the goal, you will now go on my behalf and collect the gold on presentation of the receipt. That's how the use of paper money came into being. Initially, it was gold that we are used, gold and silver, that we are used as coins, as metal money. Then later on, we started using or they started using paper money as a lot of receipt given by the goldsmith to those that are depositing their gold and silver with him. That's how we come to have what is today known as paper money and then coins money. The use of paper money came into being through the use of uh, receipts issued by the goldsmith, as we said, in exchange of deposit of precious, precious metals. The receipts become paper money or bank notes. In the same time, people started to use unconvertible paper money as me as medium of exchange. Now, having talked about what we mean, how we see the evolution of money, we now go forward to talk about functions of money. Functions of money. As money was made into paper, into coins, what functions does it perform? Number one, it serves as a medium of exchange. You can use money to buy whatever you want to buy. Buy what you want to buy, give the money, and take what you are buying in exchange for your money. Number two, it actually serves as a standard of deferred payment. It serves as a sta standard of deferred payment. You can buy goods today on credit. On the agreement that you will pay them or you pay for the goods at a particular time. Using money as a means of measuring the value of what you are going to pay in the future. Number three, it serves as a unit of account. Unit of account. Through money, you'll be able to know how much money, how much value a particular item is. It, it is money that is used to value a particular item. You know the price or you know the value of goods or services or commodities as the result of the money attached to it as a result of the price attached to such commodities. It equally becomes, number four, store of value. You can store money. Unlike in those days when goods were produced that, of, that are of perishable nature, that could not be stored. But with money today, you can store your money for a very long period of time, especially where there is no issue of inflection. Now, of course, it serves as a measure of value. You value a particular item based on its money. Money serves as a yardstick for measuring value of items. The higher the price, then the higher the value of a particular item. Let's talk about uh, the functions of money. We go to advantages of using money. Number one, it makes different payment possible. You can buy goods and pay later. Number two, it makes easy and possible to obtain loans. You can obtain loans through use of money. Number three, it makes division of labor possible. A work can be divided into different parts, and each part taken by a different person, and be paid according to the part of work done. Number four, it ensures that people can purchase goods which, satis which, which will satisfy them. You buy or purchase goods 
that you know will satisfy you. Because it, money is not, it, it's not easily gotten. When you get money, you use their money wisely, buy what you want to buy, and make sure that what you are buying will satisfy your wants. Now that's talking about the uh, advantages of money, we now go to qualities of money. There are several qualities of money. Number one, general acceptability. Money must be generally acceptable. Whatever that is made, that is backed by law as money, must be generally acceptable within a particular region, within a particular country. Like Nigeria, if you have Naira notes or coins, it must be accepted anywhere you go in as far as you are in Nigeria. It is an offense to, to reject money by one part of the country or the other. The, the money must be generally acceptable. Number two, portability. Must, money must be made in such a way that it is easily portable. It can be carried easily without any problem, without any difficulty. Number three, money must be relatively scarce. Money, can, money, money should not be something that can be seen on, on the road. You must work for it before you earn it. It must be relatively scarce. Not scarce per se, but relatively scarce. Number four, homogeneity. It must be uniform in nature. What you find as 20 naira notes in Kaduna must be the same you will see in Lagos. Must be the same you see in Uma here. So on and so forth. Durability. Money that is made must withstand the test of time. It should not be made that can, it shouldn't be made in such a way that it can easily be damaged. No, it, be, it should be made with paper or metal or whatever that can take a long period of time before being damaged. Stability. We're talking about the value of the money. It must be stable. Not falling and falling and falling and falling. Then divisibility. Money must be divided into small units. That's why we have 1,000 Naira as a unit, 500 Naira as a unit, 200 Naira, 100 Naira, 50 Naira, 20 Naira, 10 Naira, 5 Naira, so on and so forth. It must be divided into small units to be able to buy whatever you want to buy, depending on the amount of what you are buying. Number eight, must be easily recognized. Once, once you see money, you should know that it is money. And that's why when, even if you, you just give to anybody, no matter how that person is, whether he has gone to school or not, he has the reasoning to know that this is money. This is just money. It must be easily recognizable by everybody, whether it is a child. As far as it is money, you should be able to know that this is not ordinary paper, but it is, it is money. Then the last one, no interested value. the qualities of money, we we'll just go to the next one, which we, talk, which we call forms of money. There are several forms of money, several forms of money, but we are going to look at only six for the purpose of this class. Number one is legal tender. Legal tender. This is anything, anything that is generally acceptable and is backed by law to be used in the cost of exchange in the use of buying and selling, in the, in, the, in the cost of making exchange. We refer to it as legal tender. Must be generally acceptable, and it is, by, it is backed by law. 
And this law is made by a particular government. This, the government says we're going to make, make use of this as our money. And it becomes legal terror. And it, it must be accepted as money. As far as it is made by the government, it is backed by law. The example of this, we have euro that are used in, in, in uh, European countries. And of course, in, in, I think West Africa, West Africa, we are trying to have something like this too that we can, we can share as a legal tender within the West African region. Then we have coins. These are made of metal. Metal, iron money. Money that is made out of metal, from metal, from iron. Now you can hear their sound. Quick, quick, quick. Then we have bank notes. It's what you call pa or paper money. They are called bank notes or paper money. Like the 1,000 naira we have just cited as an example. Then we have what is known as partial money. Partial money, like a petrol voucher. For those that are involved in petroleum business or petrol business, a petrol business with the NAPC, they know what we're talking about here. It's when you are given a voucher, it's like money. You can exchange that for money with somebody. Like tickets. This is, this is a more or less in advanced countries where tickets are used as money. Once you buy tickets, you can send the tickets to somebody and then get your money. So also check. A check is like money too. Then we have commodity money. These are the ones we have just mentioned. Like the, 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 the ones that are used in those days. Then we have deposit money. This is talking about money that is kept in the bank. What you keep as your bank deposit. They are considered as money. Similarity between money and other commodities used for exchange in for exchange. Both fluctuate in terms of their values. Whether we are using money or using other commodities as, as a means of exchange, they all fluctuate in terms of their value. Their value can rise and at the same time fall. Two, both are used for exchange. They can be used for exchange of they both have their respective markets. Number four, both are demanded by people. Number five, the prices of both are determined by the forces of demand and supply. And the last one, they are regarded as commodities, whether money or other commodities. Let me quickly go to differences between money and other commodities that are used in terms of exchange. Number one, money is generally acceptable. But other commodities are not generally acceptable. You can accept if you like and order it. Two, money is portable. It can be easily, it can easily be carried about. But other commodities is not as that. Now we have relatively scarce. Money is relatively scarce, but other commodities are not as that. It is durable. Money is durable. We have said it when we're talking about the quality of money. But other commodities that are used in, as exchange, as a means of exchange, they are not durable. Money is visible. It can be divided. It can be divided, but other commodities cannot be divided into smaller units. Money is used as a means of exchange. You can, you can use it easily to exchange for whatever you are buying. But other things is not the same. Then we have function start, money function as a standard of default payment. Other commodities they don't do that. We have we have explained what we mean by default payment. Then of course money serves as a unit of account. Other, other commodities do not serve as units of account. And I think with this, we have come to the end of our class. As usual, we will give you an assignment. And the assignment is very simple. We have just five questions. Very simple questions. One, what is trade by butter? What is trade by butter? Two, list and explain any five problems associated with trade by butter. Again, list and explain any five problems associated with trade by butter. Number three, what is money? What is money? Number four, mention any five qualities of money. Mention any five qualities of money. Number five, the last one. Discuss any four functions of money. Discuss any four functions of money. These are the assignments. Just five questions only. 
Now, after doing your assignment, you can reach us via SMS or WhatsApp, as you always do. We appreciate you. You can reach me on 081-00127508. Again, Abbas Shehu on 081-00127508. Or my other colleague, Yari Zakaria, on 080-656-94134. Yari Zakaria on 080-656-94134. Stay safe. Keep learning. Keep learning. Have a nice time. See you in our next class. Thank you.